Welcome to Upfront. I'm Emma Jones and this is the Chief Correspondent, Peter Staunton. Thanks for joining me, Peter. You're very welcome, Emma. Now, we're going to be talking about Leeds United's incredible start to the season. And we can't do that without talking about their new manager. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of. What do you think? Uh, it's amazing to have him uh, in England and, and proven himself uh, in such a difficult division as the Championship. You know, I think it's it's been... Uh, a revelation for, for anybody who's following that particular division and also uh, just for casual fans to see the work uh, that Leeds are doing, the improvements that have been made and, and the excitement I think that's come back to the club and come back to the city for having such an amazing start to the season. There is definitely an incredible buzz around yeah. and that's a lot to do with the new manager. And um, We must point out as well, he's basically been using the same starting lineup as last season. What's he doing differently that's getting these results? Well, he had them back early for, for, for pre-season and we know that uh, during the summer they were doing two, three, four training sessions a day intensive video analysis you know the players are effectively doing a full working day out in Thorpe Arch uh, you know the, the days of coming in in the morning and being gone by lunchtime they're, they're long over uh, the players are there till six seven o'clock in the evening we know there's dormitories uh, coming up on site as well so you know they're going to have to take their CSs there as well he's even got a bed on site too so you know he's putting as much work in as the players are I think it, it, what it demonstrates is that if you've got a, a, a commitment uh, to coaching uh, a commitment to that sort of uh, promoting that culture uh, of, of, of understanding and cohesion among a squad, uh, then you can really raise uh, a player's level. And as you say, it is quite telling that, that Douglas is, is the only signing really that has managed to make it in to the starting level. Pro probably a, a position that Leeds really needed to fill. Because, you know, if they already had a, 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 an experienced left back in that position, if Charlie Taylor was there, for example, you would expect he would start there. But, the, you know, they need a left back. So and they've done, they've done very well. And do you think it is the fact that Bielsa has so much respect for the sport that he's instilled that into them? Definitely, definitely. You know, you, you look through uh, some of the best managers in the world, uh, in the Spanish-speaking world especially, you know, Pep Guardiola, uh, Jorge Sampaoli, who was manager in Argentina at the World Cup, Mauricio Pochettino, who, who um, Bielsa discovered as a player as a, when he was only 11, 12 years old, who calls him his second father uh, and his, his footballing father, if you will. Look at the respect that these guys have for Bielsa. And the legacy of Bielsa is not necessarily something that can just be measured in the trophies that he's won. Because, you know, if you look at a, an Olympic gold medal in 2004 and a few Argentinian trophies here and there, it doesn't ex exactly scream, you know, sort of a preeminent CV. But it's more uh, the methods and the style that he's instilled in his teams, whether that comes from, from uh, the rhythm and the intensity uh, that he asks for, uh, whether it comes through those little tactical tweaks uh, that he's made, uh, as we can see at Leeds or at clubs that he's been at before, Marseille, Athletic Bilbao most notably. It's the influence that Bielsa has had rather than the success that he's had that makes him such, a, such an idol for, for so many uh, world-class coaches worldwide. Yeah, he is renowned as a world-class manager. What do you think the methods are that he's instilled into the Leeds team? I think there's, there's been a huge increase in... Well, first of all, there's been an individual improvement yeah. uh, in, in a number of players, uh, right from the goalkeeper up the pitch. You know, if you're to pick a few out... Uh, look, Luke Ayling is he was called by Bielsa, a player that can solve any problem uh, the other week. And, and, and scored his first goal. And scored his first goal as well. Yep. And, and he's been excellent. He's you know probably the best defender in the division at the moment. Look at Klitsch in midfield, uh, who could barely get it, get into the team last year, and he's already scored two goals and looking like mm -hmm. a great player. And then, you know, that creative three in behind the striker, you know, we'll come on to Kimar Roof, but if you look at uh, Saiz, uh, Alyoski and Hernandez, they've been so productive. And at one stage or another last season, you know, Leeds fans were looking at these guys and go, you know, where's the end product? Yeah. I think they probably would have got rid of you know if you ask the Leeds fans in the summer they wouldn't have been too fussed maybe to lose uh, Alyoski but Roof especially I mean he does everything uh, that uh, a striker is expected to do uh, for, Mar for Marcelo Bielsa and you consider that this is a coach who's had you know he discovered Gabriel Batistuta you know he knows what he wants yeah. from a striker and he can get uh, Roof working uh, I think he, at the moment he's working to a Premier League level you know Definitely. his goals he's scoring are amazing and it's just a great cohesion and there's a great unity and a great fluidity about Leeds. They're a joy to watch. Calvin Phillips as well. He's improved. Oh, I he seems to be yeah, yeah, a lot better. Yeah, yeah. And he's even getting plotted outside sort of yeah. Leeds circles. You know, you look at down through any of the forums, fan forums are on, on the, uh, the roundup shows yeah. at the weekend and people are talking about Calvin Phillips as the best midfielder in the league. And that is... That position in a Bielsa team is so, so important because yeah. that is the player that, that sets the tempo. You know, whether it comes to winning the ball back or being the first pass, uh, you know, it's a very important position. And you need to have stamina, you need to have technique, uh, you need to have awareness uh, to play that position. I think Leeds fans, again, they've seen a player in Calvin Phillips just come up a level, yeah. uh, maybe even more than one level this season. And that can be said about, well, any of them within the team, you know, Berardi. 
Uh, we know they had Douglas. They didn't have Douglas last year, but he stepped it up. Um, Liam Cooper as well. You know, I think we've mentioned everybody at this yeah. stage. You know, yeah. they've just been the whole team. Yeah, they've just, just been lifting, and it's been made, it's it's made it difficult for the likes of of, of Baker, Blackman, uh, Harrison, and and uh, Bamford yeah. uh, to get into the team and get a start. It really has been refreshing to watch mm-hmm. them. And you've written, haven't you, about Marcelo Bielsa? Yeah. Give us a little plug. What have you written about? Go on. All right. Well. I spoke to one of his former players uh, at Marseille uh, just to get an insight into into what it's like, uh, what a training session is like under Bielsa. And you know, he told me that you know if he sees something that he doesn't like, he'll stop. He'll stop the entire session and, and make sure that that the player in question knows what he's doing right and knows what he's doing wrong. Um, they're so well prepared in the, in the, a video analysis sense. You know, I think when he, when he had his meeting in Buenos Aires with the with the with the chairman uh, before he joined Leeds. You know he could quote formations from from Burton Albion. You know he'd watched uh, every Leeds game from the past three seasons. You know the attention to detail that he has from a video perspective. It's just you know it's 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 beyond reproach. It's, this is a guy who who you know when he was managing Argentina at the World Cup in two thousand and two, he flew to Korea and Japan with seven thousand videos. Unfortunately, wow. <laughs> then went home after the group stage. Uh, they were in England's group, and that was when David Beckham's penalty. Uh, Ended up putting well, ultimately cost Argentina their place in the, in the second round. It was a huge disappointment uh, for in Bielsa's career. I think he will admit himself that was probably the biggest disappointment uh, of his career. But you know uh, what he's put in to clubs and to national associations over the years has been you know nothing short of spectacular. His first club in Newell's mm-hmm. Old Boys, they've they've renamed the stadium after him. Uh, he donated two million dollars uh, to to rebuild uh, the youth facilities there when he moved to Mexico he was responsible uh, for putting in place sort of uh, player production procedures in 92 cities in Mexico during wow. during the stage in the 90s it wasn't a surprise to see 9 10 11 uh, Marcelo Bielsa discovered players within the Me- Mexican national team then he took that um, you know that experience stood him well in the Argentina job absolutely spectacular team I know it fell down at the last for them at the World Cup but he did come up with, a, with an Olympic medal after that you know anybody who's worked for him uh, we're talking about players like Pochettino, we're talking about players like Batistuta, Diego Simeone. They've got nothing but good words to Respect. say about him. Yeah. yeah. And and for Leeds to pull this off, I know Orta gets an awful lot of abuse from, from Leeds fans. But but hey, if this is the appointment that gets him to the Premier League, I think Exactly. Well, talking of that, I'm gonna take a deep breath and right, ask Right, okay, I know what you're gonna ask. Me. <sighs> is yeah. it too early? Yes, it is too early because okay. if there's if there's one uh, drawback to Bielsa's football, it's the intensity that they play at. It leaves them sort of jaded and exposed towards the end of the season. Now, I'm sure he's got his homework done. He's not going to all of a sudden look at the league table halfway through and go, wow, I didn't realise it was 46 games long. Yeah. You know, he'll have his homework yeah. done. He's going to have something in store to prepare for that. But if you look at the way Athletic Bilbao towards the end of the season sort of faded off, Marseille were the same way as well. You know, they led uh, when he was there for his, his one full season at Marseille. They led the league for from Paris Saint-Germain yeah. for a long time. But ultimately, you know, the methods just caught yeah. up with him. And you just worry about you know, Leeds have a skinny squad. He likes to have 22 players in his squad. Mm. But if they have injuries or suspensions, you know, it, it might become an issue if he has to put in too many young or inexperienced players into his first team. Then, you know, some dodgy might results might go against them. But hey, if they're in, with a, in, if they're in there in January, then they might get a bit of investment money and kind of gamble and say, OK, let's put 10, 12, 15 million into the team in January so, you know, we can maybe make a make a proper run at it and then get that money back when they get into the Premier League next year. Exactly. And we're off to a great start, so I'm excited. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Thank you very much, Peter Staunton, for your expert opinion. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram, which you can find in the description below. And as always, please do give us your opinions. We, we like to hear from you guys. Um, and make sure you subscribe to get all the latest football news and analysis direct from Goal.